Hello everyone. Thanks for watching the series of videos reviewing the junior mock paper and now we're going to begin reviewing the senior mock paper. As always, if you haven't yet seen the senior mock paper that I'm referring to, you can find it in the description below. And by all means, feel free to pause this video, try out the questions before coming back here again. We will be splitting it up into five parts as usual, and this video will be going through questions one through five. Just a very quick note about the SMO Senior. As you can see, the questions are a bit more technical in nature. A lot of uh, algebraic topics which you have to be familiar with before you really can have any chance of doing this. So it doesn't just involve ingenuity, it does involve a fair deal of knowledge as well. So hopefully through this set of questions, if you realize that there is some topic which you don't quite know so well, you can take a bit of time to review it on your own, try to pick up some ideas before tackling the actual SMO. Alright, so let's begin with question 1. We have got A, B, C, D are all sines of various angles, 2 degrees, 22 degrees, 202 degrees and 20, 22 degrees and we are asked to sort them in order. Now it makes sense here that what we have to do is simply to shift them all to 0 to 360 degrees and then try to compare them. So 2 and 22 degrees are fine. 202 degrees is kind of okay, it's just that we need to note that it is negative and specifically it is negative of sine 22 degrees, subtracting of 180. For D, we can subtract 5 times of 360 degrees first, which is 1800 to get sine 222 degrees and just like before subtract off 180 to move it to the first quadrant. So now we know that A and B are positive, C and D are negative. We also know that sine is increasing from 0 to 90 degrees. So A is less than B and for the other two we know that sine 22 degrees is smaller than sine 42 degrees, so negative of sine 22 degrees should be larger than negative of sine 42 degrees. So the order would be D, C, A, B, which is option D. On to the second question. Now, this is sort of a medley of third properties and exponential properties if you will. It is not actually difficult but this is something that does happen in SMO sometimes where they just want to make sure that they test everything you could possibly know about these in one single question. The question asks you which of the following expressions is not equal to one half, meaning that most of them should be equal to one half and our focus will be trying to make it into 2 to the power of negative 1 let's say for many of these. So for the first one, 1 8 is 2 to the negative 3 to the 1 third which is indeed 2 to the negative 1. So this is half which is I guess I'll take it to mean we have got what it mostly will be equal to. For b, you can combine together the two exponents and multiply them together so you would get square root of 2 to the power of negative 2. And square root of 2 squared is 2, so you get 2 to the negative 1. Again, this is correct. For C, uh, perhaps we can first say that the negative doesn't matter because the 2 is even. So you're going to have square of that, so it can be ignored. And then I can write this as 2 root 2 to the power of negative 2 thirds. And 2 root 2 is square root of 8. So this is 8 to the power of half times negative 2 thirds, which is going to be 8 to the negative 1 third. And this is also equal to half because the cube root of 8 is 2. So this is also correct. For D, 
4 cube rooted is 4 to the power of 1 third and then you multiply by negative 3 halves sorry should be a bit neater with the multiplication so we don't get mixed up and so this would be 4 to the power of negative 1 half and this is also equal to half so you know that the last one is probably not going to be equal to half but let's check so this would be 2 to the power of well 1 over it so it's negative and cube root is 1 third so negative 1 third times square root 3 this is 2 to the negative 1 over root 3 which is certainly not equal to the rest of these so it is not equal to half and that is our answer now my personal experience with SMO is when I see a question like this I may choose to just skip it for a while not because I don't know how to do it but we know that it is a pretty technical problem and if it frustrates you a little you can leave it for later when you are unable to solve any of the harder questions then just come back here and resolve this of course do not forget to attempt the question later if you are coming back to it at some point question 3 now we are asked to compare 3 logarithms and they are log base 4, log base 8, log base 16 so once again it all has something to do with powers of 2 now notice that 12 is divisible by 4, 24 is divisible by 8 and 80 is divisible by 16 so we can start off by making our life a fair bit easier just by writing it as log base 4 of 3 plus 1 and then log base four, sorry, log base eight of three plus one, and log base sixteen of five plus one. Okay. Using our product rule for logarithms, we split it off, and the plus ones are irrelevant for comparison, so we can just get rid of them. Now we can do a change of base uh, using log base two for all of these. So you would get log base 2 of 3 over log base 2 of 4, which is 2. Log base 2 of 3 over log base 2 of 8, which is 3. And log base 2 of 5 over log base 2 of 16, which is 4. Now obviously, if we look at the first two, you are dividing by 2 versus dividing by 3, and these are still positive. So you know that b will be smaller than a for sure so we are left to compare c with both of these now we can compare them like just directly since these are fractions just by cross multiplying and if you cross multiply we are left with 4 log base 2 of 3 versus 3 log base 2 of 5 and in turn the comparison is between 3 to the 4 versus 5 cubed so you know that 5 cubed is bigger than 3 to the 4 and so this means that still we are not done because b is also smaller than c but I can do the same thing with a and c In this case, multiplying both sides by 4, you just have 2 log base 2 of 3 versus log base 2 of 5. And obviously, 3 squared is greater than 5. So, A is bigger than C. We are just write it in the correct order so that combining, we can say B is less than C is less than A. These are the sort of comparison questions that appear a lot in the multiple choice section of the SMO Senior, whether it be comparing certs, it be comparing exponents, comparing logarithms, and all of these. Uh, generally, there isn't one right method to do it. You just need to make sure that they are on a level playing field. So same base, same index, same exponent, same whatever it is that you're comparing. If you are trigo, then make them all sine or make them all cosine or something like that. Okay, so that's question 3. Next one is question 4. 
as long as you know what to do with graphs do not have any points of intersection, then this question will become yet another relatively standard exercise. Now, when we say that graphs do not have any point of intersection, you need to understand what it means for graphs to have a point of intersection. Now, for them to have a point of intersection, it means that there is some value of x and y that gives you a point on both graphs, meaning that the simultaneous equations should have a solution. Now, conversely, if we say that it does not have any points of intersection, it just means the simultaneous equation does not have any real solutions. So in this case, if we want to compare these and look for a solution to the simultaneous equation, since both of these are y, we can just equate them. And we're trying to find a value of p, or rather the range of values of p, such that this does not have any real solutions. If you recognize that these are all quadratic equations, then it becomes a usual problem to use the discriminant. This is the equation, and the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac is 4 squared minus 4 times 20 minus p times p minus 15 should be less than 0. Now, a small little tip is that if you see the options in the multiple choice, right, uh, you can definitely just substitute in some numbers if you want to test it out. So for example, you should be able to substitute in something like uh, 15 and say that, oh, that does not work because if you put in 15, then this would be 4 squared is less than 0. So you can eliminate an option like C. This is the sort of thing that you can do if you don't feel like expanding and factorizing. But I'm just going to do that anyway because this is not too difficult <laughs> because I set the question and I know it can be factorized. So uh, let's divide by 4 first though. I think that is easier. So p squared, here you have got minus 35p, 4 plus 300, so plus 304 is less than 0. Now if you are wondering how to factorize it, uh, you can tell that it should be some of these numbers here, right? And 16 and 19 happens to be the pair that sums to 35, so it's probably correct. And 16 times 19 indeed is equal to 304. So we get the correct range from 16 to 19, which is option B. Okay, last one in this video is yet again a very common trigger question where you're just supposed to play around with your quadrants and at the end use the identity for sine a minus b. In order to know which ones we need to find, let's just apply the identity first. It would be sine theta cosine alpha minus cosine theta sine alpha. So we know that what we are looking for is the sines and cosines of these angles. Now for the theta, cosine theta is negative 3 fifth, and it is in the third quadrant. So you can draw the triangle if you like. I use theta not because that would be the principal angle. And so if you take the sine of this principal angle, it is 4 over 5. And the actual value would be negative. So sine theta is supposed to be negative 4 fifth. You can also do the same with the alpha for tangent. This is in the first quadrant, so I can actually draw it out in a normal way and know that that's the actual angle alpha. 15, 8, and 17. So 
sine is 15 over 17 and cosine is 8 over 17. Good, so all we need to do is to put it in and we will be done. So sine theta is negative 4 fifth. Cosine alpha is 8 over 17. Cosine theta is equal to negative 3 fifth. And sine alpha is equal to 15 over 17. So you get negative 32 plus 45 over 85. So do be very careful with these kinds of problems because conceptually you know how to do it. it doesn't mean that you get any credit for that. Be sure to just double check your calculations before moving past the question. Right, and so this takes up us up to question 5. We'll stop here for this video. Please do subscribe and look out for the next few videos going through the remaining problems. So thanks again and see you soon.